The following program is a production of West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Five thousand student veterans attend colleges and universities in West Virginia. Many of them are facing challenges as they earn their college degrees. Paying attention in class is really a struggle. What's going on around me? What's going on behind me? Watching both doors. Most students in my class don't have to do that. Probably the only guy here that's like 23 years old that's like a sophomore. On this outlook, a portrait of the newest generation of veterans to go to college on the GI Bill. This is Outlook, a reflection of our place, our time, and our people. Dude. Oh god, you got lucky then. We had Wally X's. Oh, that's because you're Marines, you know. We don't give you any good. To yeah, no, we, we, get the, we get the leftovers. <laughs> you know, they, they, there was this article that said, yeah, he died because, you know, the 24 hours that he had been out on a 24 hour mission, all this other stuff. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, they just totally blamed the Army for, you know, blamed us for his death. Oh, of course. Okay, it's not. There was some. There was some. The Seventh yeah. Infantry Division, the Bayonet Division, did storm quite yeah, a few beaches. Right they, the, so did First Cap. Yeah. But, but the same. All right. These veterans of the war in Iraq are students at West Virginia University. Military life may be behind them, but it still shapes their experiences. I was uh, assigned to the uh, First Infantry Division, the Fourth Brigade, uh, first of the 28th. Uh, infantry regiment. You know, it went from a nice, pretty day in Baghdad to, you know, your truck was filled with smoke. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't see. You're just trying to get out because you wasn't for sure if your truck was going to catch on fire, and you weren't for sure who was dead and who was alive in your truck. And, you know, thank God, you know, every time we were hit, it just worked out that nobody was hurt too bad. Mark Combs survived three IED explosions during his tour in Iraq, where he was in some of the most intense fighting of the war during the surge in Baghdad. He is from rural Raleigh County, West Virginia. During his senior year in high school, he started partying hard. I kind of just kind of did my own thing for a little while and then finally it hit me like, man I am really messed up I really need to get away from this I really need to get my life straightened out and I talked to my grandfather who's you know you know any he's my ultimate source of wisdom anytime I have a problem go to him and he told me he's like you know you should join the army they'll straighten you out they'll teach you some good discipline and you know you'll be getting paid a decent amount of money they provide you with food and a place to live he goes, you know, and it'd be really good for you. After Combs was discharged from the Army, he decided to go to WVU. So over the last couple of classes, we've been talking about state formation. We've been talking about how England became a recognizable state, how they worked in. Combs joined the WVU Veterans Club to meet other student veterans at the school. The club provides a place for all student veterans at WVU to meet and discuss issues. But for this tailgate, you guys want to just do like a setup, like just one game, like November 7th for Veterans Day? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know a lot of veterans that would probably go to something like that if there was something going on. I mean, there's a lot of us that go to them anyway, but we go to other people's tailgates. You know what I mean? If we had our own tailgate, I mean, that's even better. Steve Ernst is president of the club. I mean. Uh, we'll do it then. Uh, Marshall game, gold lot. Uh, what I'll do is I'll try to get two big poles, and since you got that field right there by Towers, I'll put our poster up. We got a big old, we got a big old banner 
said it's veterans of WVU and it's got some decals and all the seals of each branch. So I want to join the military and my dad told me if I wanted to do it, do it now while I was young. So, and then I saw my brother and uh, one of my best friends, they both went to college for about a year or two and then ended up joining the Marine Corps. And I kind of thought, you know, not that they made a mistake, but I kind of thought like learn from what they did. Like I didn't want to go to school for a year and then be like, and then join the military. I just figured I'll, I'll do it off the bat. And then if I like it, I'll make a career. If I don't, I, I get out and go to school and it's paid for. I do have a question for everybody actually. Um, is there anybody here that, that hasn't gotten uh, hooked up with our Facebook site yet? People ask you, you know, 15 years of active duty, man. You sure you don't have five more in you? And the answer is, yeah, I have five more in me. I could do five more standing on my head, but do I really want to? I want to be 39, retired, drawing a pension of give or take $1,800 a month for doing nothing. I can see it four years later, you know, I'll be 40 something years old. I'll be 380,000 pounds sitting over in 7-Eleven slinging slushies for 30, you know, 30 hours a week at seven an hour because that's all it takes to, to supplement my income. And I'll die of a heart attack, diabetes, and you know, testicular cancer all at once, something like that. Yeah. I don't want that. I had to be challenged. I, had, I have to find a challenge in life. And the, the big question was, is this too much of a challenge for me? Did I bite off more than I could chew with leaving active duty service to go to college? And um, they say they got it down to three places we, we can go for spring break. And then uh, they're going to give them the places exactly uh, later this week. So by next meeting, I should be able to tell you all. Good to go. Yeah. And we just give you one more. Before you got involved with the club, had you been involved? Did you know a lot of other student vets here at WVU? No, I didn't. I, I kind of, honestly, I kind of felt like I thought I was the only one. Really? Yeah, I was like, I'm probably the only guy here that's like 23 years old that's like a sophomore. And, you know, living in a dorm, just like blended in the population of the people. But uh, once I found the other guys, I was like, hey, it's a lot more of us here. It was like been through the same thing. And then like Steve was in a unit that was like down the street from me. So, yeah. These students are part of a new generation of veterans from what the Department of Defense calls the global war on terror. The challenges they face are similar carving their identity as a minority group of students on campus, adjusting to student life after the trauma of war, and paying for college. I got out of the Marine Corps August 8th, and then I moved to Morgantown and started school on the 18th of last year. When you get on the campus and like you're sitting in your classes and you know, like myself, I was uh, 22 at the time coming here, uh, just kind of looking around and taking all freshmen to classes, you have everyone that's uh, 18 and 19, they're pretty young. And it's only a couple year difference, but after being in the military, it's, uh, you know, you can see the, uh, you could see the difference. And uh, I wouldn't say it was like a maturity thing or anything. It was just, uh, you know, it just, you're on just a different level than they are. Jim Stevens spent 15 years of his life in the Army including a year in Afghanistan. Life is just, in a lot of ways, a lot simpler. You don't have to worry about your rent. Nobody's charging you rent on a, on a, on a sea hut or a tent or whatever, you know, wherever you live. I don't have to worry about paying the electric bill, the gas bill, the water bill. You know, I don't have to worry about buying groceries. I get three squares a day at least, you know. I have a lot less worries uh, in those terms anyways. You know, obviously it's doesn't necessarily offset that you're getting shot at over there, but... Добрый день. Добрый день. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Я руководитель группы американских студентов. Я руководитель. I enrolled at WVU in June of last year, 2008, as a pre-computer science major, and so far keeping that major. Uh, taking an interest in Russian language and may become a, a Russian studies major as well. I don't think a lot of people have drawn that correlation yet between separating service member and student. A student veteran is not a rare creature. Roughly almost 2% of, of the students at WVU are veterans. You know, every lecture hall you go into out there, if there's 50 students in there, one of them at least is a veteran. It's interesting. 
um, you know, the, the, the college experience as promised in mass is you're going to be surrounded by all these cool people, all your peers, you're going to be able to be friends with them, go out and party with them and get your fake IDs and go to the clubs with them and everything. And it's a, an experience that doesn't really, uh, doesn't appeal to me too much and B not, not going to happen when these folks realize that you had a driver's license when they were born. It doesn't work. Ian Kellams is a therapist at WVU where he counsels student veterans. He attends vet club meetings and serves on WVU's Veterans Committee. Uh, I mean, they're a pretty rough group of guys and uh, their language is pretty colorful and they've got the tattoos and but there, you know, you get past that exterior and it's so incredibly rewarding. Um, I mean, there's such a good group of guys and uh, you get through that outer roughness and, and they're just, I mean, they do anything for you. If, if I needed help, I would call a vet um, because they're dependable and, and they'll step up to the plate. So um, I, I think my, my involvement with them has been selfish in some ways and they're, they're, I just enjoy being around them. Um, I have seen veterans here. Um, a lot of their concerns are, are what you'd expect. Um, some are dealing with PTSD issues, um, adjustment issues, um, sort of the, the culture shock of going from, from war to college, um, family issues, relationship issues, substance abuse issues, um, a lot of what you read about in the paper in terms of issues that veterans are dealing with now. You know, most of my dreams are about being back over there. And, you know, in the beginning, it was nothing but firefights and uh, rocket attacks and mortar attacks and seeing IEDs blow up my friends and IEDs hitting me. Uh, but they progressed. Uh, in my mind, I was really thinking about certain things, you know, the aspects of, uh, you know, really taking another human being's life. And it r really started to bother me because that was one thing that I was known for. That was like everybody knew who I was in the battalion because I did that. And I did it more than anybody else. And my dreams became more, uh, more related to that sort of thing. Just having to watch those people die over and over and over again. And, um, that's pretty much what it is even to this day, is I still deal with the repercussions of taking another human being's life, the um, emotional things. like, And after a long night of those dreams, you just don't shake it during the day. It'll be three or four in the afternoon, and I've been up since nine o'clock that morning, and there I am still thinking about, man, what if, what if I was on the other side of that? Combs takes a full load of classes at WVU in history, Spanish, geography, and political science. I find myself always being on guard, always having to watch the people around me. And if, you know, there's people behind me, it, it, it bugs me. And, you know, they're not, you know, chances are, you know, 10 times out of 10, nothing's going to happen in class. But, you know, you just automatically go into that mode where, you know, self-preservation is the number one thing every day and it's hard to get out of that and especially it has been for me so paying attention in class is really a struggle I have to you know really try to concentrate on the teacher I have to really try to concentrate what's on the board what's being said what's going on around me what's going on behind me watching both doors uh, you know most most students in my class don't have to do that Keep that in mind. No matter how friendly or whatever you think these people are, it doesn't matter if you're in Iraq or if it's some future war, never underestimate anybody. Of course. I'll probably be in Afghanistan, though. Iraq seems like it'll be drawing down more by the time I get out of my training. I have a whole year. Combs lives with his cousin, a senior at WVU, who will become an Army officer when he graduates. Like I told you, you're always going to have enlisted men below you. And those are the guys that do everything for you. And like, biggest thing I can say is spend time with your guys. Make sure you get to know them. 
they're much more inclined to do better for you if they're closer with you. These are actually care packages to uh, guys I served with that are back over in Iraq right now. And uh, a lot of guys like to wear uh, these underneath their helmets so it's not matted up their hair too bad. Uh, you know, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, Barbie band-aids. Like this care package is actually to my old Sergeant Major who I was uh, pretty close to. And you know, he's getting up in his ears so you know, I thought he would enjoy this. And you know, it's something from home, but you know, when it's making you, you know, miss home getting this stuff, it's also making you laugh. You know, since coming home, you know, my situation has improved some, uh, you know, uh, but it's, it's not anywhere close to being right again. And uh, you know, I'll talk to my grandpa about it because he's a Korean War veteran. And uh, he told me it won't be right for a long time. And uh, I'm just, I want to get to that day where, you know, I can wake up in the morning and go throughout my day and it's a normal day it's a nor for a normal person, you know. And at the end of the day, I can lay my head down and know that Throughout the course of the night, I'm not going to be having all these crazy nightmares, and and um, you know, I'm just if I if there was a special pill I could take to just end it, you know, all the PTSD stuff. You know, if it was a billion dollars, I'd take out a loan for it right now. Okay. Combs is only one of many veterans who struggles to cope with the hardships of war. Kellams hears about the struggles many veterans face when trying to readjust from combat. Um, in terms of what makes it difficult, what can make it difficult for for veterans to to succeed academically, there are a few things that come to mind. Um, some are the symptoms related to, to post traumatic stress disorder. Um, the classic symptoms involve difficulty concentrating. Uh, so it's not hard to imagine how that would make it hard to concentrate. Uh, I think especially in classroom situations um, where there are these foreign pe people you're not familiar with, um, there are lots of things going on in the classroom, um, seemingly unimportant things can, can trigger a PTSD experience so that you're having these intrusive thoughts, you're having flashbacks to a combat situation, um, and feel, feel the need to leave the classroom immediately. Um, and so that can really get in the way of your academic progress. Maurice Matthews first came to WVU in 2003 to run track. But when the track program experienced budget cuts, Matthews left WVU to join the Marines and served in Fallujah. When I was there, everybody was uh, coming back into the cities and stuff. Uh, we were setting up like um, VCPs, vehicle checkpoints, where you're checking cars as they were coming in the city, you know, make sure you no know, one's smuggling any weapons in. And after a while, you know, it's, like, it's, it's almost like police presence in the neighborhood. You know, some people are like, you know, why the cops here is always something negative. But if the cop keeps walking around, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, how's your day going? You know, after a while, people are starting to warm up to him. Like the kids there, kids are awesome, you know. We used to get soccer balls that people would send over to us to drive by. Where I lived at, it was pretty much like every other day we were getting like mortared. And we lost a couple guys like that too. So, I mean, it was just like, man, you know, sometimes we were scared to just like leave out, you know. After two tours in Iraq, Matthews finished his period of service and returned to school. The children aren't innocent, he said in his uh, exit interview, if you will, before he's executed. He says because they are, they are part of this evil system, they're going to grow up to be slaveholders, and this is all evil, and all this must be destroyed. And if these things represent evil, men or children, uh, Mo? Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes like women and children fight back too, so I mean can't just like just kill men and then you never know you're not watching your back women come up behind you too and take you out probably my biggest thing was like being out of school so long that you know the work you know I just kind of like I really didn't get it you know I was having problems and stuff and I ain't gonna lie I still am you know kind of a little bit so I go to other people for help you know like hey you know can I get a little help in this but like me I can type a paper like it's cool you know so I'm like hey you know I, I'll review your paper if you help me out with like a little bit of math or like some science or something I count him as long students as I can expect to participate. And he's engaged. I have office hours, and I've met with him in my office hours two or three times. 
Most students, not at all. Probably only have total four students who've ever come to office hours to say, oh, what can I be doing better? And what should I be focusing on? And just to get clarity, which shows me he's invested in being here. And I find that a lot of uh, returning students are like that. Waiting on some wings. You can have some wings when we're done with those. Good. Don't work. Oh. You know how many sandbags I filled in that rack? Zero. Zero. Well, no, I thought it was funny. I lost count after three times. Our ops chief had us go pick up like 300 sandbags, and we picked them up, and they're all like get dry rod. And it was like, what was the point of picking all these sandbags up? We can only use half of them. Mo Matthews and Steve Ernst are two of the more than 250,000 veterans across the country who have applied for help from a new GI Bill, known as the post 9-11 GI Bill. According to the State Higher Education Policy Commission, there are as many as 5,000 veterans earning degrees from West Virginia's colleges and universities. Because of the post 9-11 GI Bill, more veterans are able to attend college than ever before. To be eligible for the new GI Bill, a person must have served 90 days of active duty after September 10, 2001. The bill covers the cost of tuition and fees at the most expensive in-state undergraduate tuition level at a public institution. It also provides a monthly housing allowance and a book and supply allowance to those who qualify. And the housing allowance for the Morgantown area is $1,239, um, which is very good for them. Um, so it's, it's, it's very nice. And then they can get a full financial aid package um, based on their FAFSA information over and above that post 9-11 GI Bill. In addition, WVU is developing new curriculum to help student veterans. Starting in 2009, West Virginia University is offering new classes designed exclusively for veterans attending the school. Two veterans-only classes are currently being offered, an orientation class and English 101. There is a orientation class. It's just a, um, a transition class from soldier to student. And it um, encompasses a lot of what our general University 101 classes that all students go through. They really like the idea that they get to come to class and voice their opinion um, and their concerns. So that's that what I would say was the key to the successful class. It's not just the, uh, it's not just meeting the academic objectives, it's giving them an opportunity to be heard. So it gives them what they need to get through the week. And so it, it kind of refreshes them so that they, therefore they think that they can get through the next week. Everything that they learned in the military is based on a team concept from the time they go through basic training until the time they leave. So when they arrive at West Virginia University, and they sit in a large classroom between one and 200 people. And they look around the room sometimes and they look for the veteran that they might not find. And so that might in turn cause them to leave the classroom and to not come back, not only to the class, but not to the university as a whole. I think the thing I would like to see more of is are, are those classes. It's, uh, I think that's, uh, a brilliant idea, you know, and uh, it really caters to us. And, you know, that's a lot, I know that's a lot to ask for because like you said, it's just, we're just a sm very small percentage of the student population at WVU. But, you know, you know, our days may be exponentially worse than the average students. And to have that little bit of, you know, catering you know, make, make our days a lot easier. WVU has a veterans committee consisting of concerned staff and student vets. They hope to find a space on campus for a veterans lounge where vets can find each other quickly and give support and friendship. They are also arranging for veterans contacts in each academic department. We want to have veterans and military personnel on campus. 
um, because they bring with them some very strong characteristics. You know, they're taught to be leaders while they're in the military. Um, they, they are goal-oriented and they know how to, to reach those goals. Um, and they're very motivated. Um, so, and they bring diversity to campus. You know, they're not the typical 18-year-old um, student coming out of high school and on the campus. They're bringing some real life experience with them. And so in discussions in classrooms and across campus, they bring a different perspective. And um, um, so we, we want these um, veterans and military people on campus. It enhances our campus. And so we want to do everything we can for them because of what they've done for us. It's 1% of our population um, that is in the military um, defending and supporting us. Um, so it's now our opportunity to give back to them. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the south end zone as we proudly welcome soldiers who recently returned to campus from operations in Iraq and, and Afghanistan. On behalf of WVU and the Army's Operation Tribute to Freedom, Please join us in welcoming back to school our soldier heroes, Major Wayne Sadowski, Captain Eric Delgado, Master Sergeant Don Ferguson, Master Chief Robert Wickbold, Sergeant Stephen Ernst, Corporal Chris Surgeon, Corporal Maurice Matthews, Senior Airman Tarina Miller, Lance Corporal Chad Wilson, Airman David Burns, Sergeant John Halsby. Higher Ed is a business. Um, that's, the vets have dedicated money. We know their tuition is going to be paid. Um, so there's a financial reason to, uh, to take care of them. But I think there's also a moral reason to take care of them. Um, I think we owe it to them and I think they deserve that. Um, and I think people are recognizing that. You know, West Virginia University has such a, such a close um, tie to the state. The state is so patriotic. Um, I, I think we need to be the flagship university in terms of demonstrating how we take care of, of these soldiers who've dedicated so much to us. So. This program has been a production of West Virginia Public Broadcasting.